So welcome to Turning Point Online. Today we'll be, be focusing on one and Pastor Phil will be speaking on Reveal. So stay tuned for a great word from our Senior Minister, Pastor Phil. Well, hello, Turning Point. It's so great you're able to join with us again today. Don't forget, we have our live service, face-to-face -face gatherings happening all over East Melbourne. And so jump on our website and have a look to see where one of them are. So you can still get there today, next week. Join us to make sure we can grow together. See, 2021 is a special year. And I believe it's going to be a year where we come together as one to bring a change to our nation, change to our world. But first, the change has got to happen in us. See, our theme for this year, of course, is one. And today I want to talk about the New Testament revealing how we become one. You would have heard me talking about it in the past. Out of Isaiah 43, it says this, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. See, too often we think that if we would just do our thing and cruise along, everything's going to be great. Well, the truth is, if you want to go through an area where it's like a desert, you've got to go through and actually cut through and put a way through. Like, you know, people going through a jungle. If one person goes here, another one there, and another one there, the ones following have no idea. But if they all come together, cut a path, the ones following know where to go. So that's what I believe we've got to do. As we go through a desert, we've got to make a roadway that people can see how to get there. It's also a bit like what it describes there of that stream that flows. See, again, water laying on the top of the ground doesn't do much. But we've got lots of drops of water and they start traveling in one direction. They start to cut a channel. And you know what? The water behind knows exactly where to go. We've got to be the same. We've become one in our vision, one in our plans, one in our purpose. And so where we're traveling this year is we're going to be doing four steps throughout the year. The first one is today, what we're talking about is to reveal, identify our unity, identify who we are in Christ. The next one, of course, is our revelation of who and what we are to be doing, how we come into the revelation of God. Our third one is our relationship with God. Our fourth one is the release. And that's shown out in these four areas, a new start, a new vision, new leaders and new perspective. So that's where we're traveling. So today, let's deal with the reveal, the reveal in us. Our theme scripture, of course, is coming out of John 17, and it says that they all may be one. And the world might know us because we are one. Unity is an incredible thing. When we unify, when we stand together, we can see the world change around us. And see, when we come into unity with Christ, we become brand new. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 puts it like this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, what are they? In Christ. If you are in Christ, the new creation has come. In other words, you become a new creation. The old has gone. You're no longer the same as you used to be. You are now new. The new is here. Let me just say it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. Today, the question is, where are you? Are you still trying to dwell in the old? The what used to be, what could have been, oh, if I, oh, or we can have a look forward to what Jesus has said and say, hey, let's get hold of what he's got. So I want to describe it as we go through seven ships. And I go, why am I talking about ships? You'll find out as we travel. But I remember some time ago, my wife encouraged us to go on this cruise together. Well, since 2020, cruises have not been the flow of the month, but back then it was a prestige thing to go on a cruise. And I suddenly realised you put three, four, five thousand people in this little box, chuck it out in the water where you can't go anywhere. There's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of connection. And when I thought about it, we've had ships that we've used in the past to get people to this country. And they've spent months, years stuck on this little box. Do you know by the end of it, Something special would have happened. They would have become best friends or worst enemies because they would have found out something about each other. And so I want to go through this journey of ships, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute, to see how are we travelling 
and how are we linking as one and what do we have to do to make sure we come as one well number one the first ship is apprenticeship what is an apprenticeship well that's where we learn underneath somebody we become an apprentice we learn of one another we actually learn to serve you know when i became an apprentice <clears throat> my first job was clean all the spare parts in these sets of drawers really exciting job hang on but as a result i learned where all the bits were we got to learn that we come underneath someone else's training in fact paul wrote to the ephesians he said it like this in ephesians 4 11. so christ himself gave apostles prophets and evangelists pastors and teachers to equip his people for words of service and why did he give so that we might learn if we are a pastor, our job is to actually help others to pastor. If you're an apostle, then your job is to help people to apostle. See, our job is that we might become one in service. It goes down to verse 14. Then we will no longer be infants tossed backwards and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and cunning and craftiness of people in their deceptive scheming. Do you know today, there's lots of schemes there's lots of things that will try to take your money, try to take your brain, try to convince you that right is wrong and wrong is right. So we've got to come back and say, how do we know? Well, we start off by becoming apprentices. We put ourselves underneath our pastors, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, that we might learn. So then in verse 16, from him the whole body joined together. What? Joined together, linked, becoming one, held together by every supporting link of it. It grows builds up itself in love as each part does its work so if we're going to be serious about changing our country our state then we're going to be ones that realize that this ship's got to get into we need to become apprentices and become into apprenticeship number two companionship well companionship i've put down as prayer because see the greatest companion we've got is jesus we need to spend that time in prayer but sometimes Prayer gets a little bit hard, doesn't it? And we start to pray and then we think about the garden outside, the holiday, what's in the fridge to eat. Hang on. We need to be in companionship. You know, a good companion actually listens to one, someone when they're talking. You know, we need to be listening to Jesus. We need to be there. So let me just take you to this little incident that happened in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 36 through. It says, when Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and said to them sit while I go over there and pray now, that's a pretty simple thing isn't it he organized a few prayer buddies and said can we go and pray together but hang on I just want to sit a little bit further away can you just sit there while I'm over there praying verse 40 says when he returned he saw all his disciples <laughs> sleeping what was his response couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour now of course he was Jesus but I couldn't help but think when you're in need, when you need your companion, your companion needs to keep watch. Maybe you've got issues of temptation. Maybe you've got some addictions you're dealing with. Well, that's when you need your companions to stand with you in prayer. Well, these guys let Jesus down pretty bad, didn't they? They just simply, huh, we'll have a sleep while Jesus is over there. Sometimes we do that in the body of Christ. We have a sleep when people are in need. Okay, and then he asked Peter, why don't you pray? so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is wheeling, but the flesh is weak. See, that's the truth today. Many of us have got a heart to serve God, but we struggle getting out of bed. We want to give everything for God, but we struggle about our tithing. We, we've got to get past this and say, we are in companionship and we can place it. The third ship, discipleship. Well, discipleship, really, I just want to bring it to a term of commitment see we need to be committed 100 percent. luke 14 puts it like this suppose one of you wants to build a tower won't you first sit down and estimate the cost and see if you've got enough money to complete it for if you lay the foundations and not able to finish it everyone who sees it will ridicule you saying this person began a building and wasn't able to finish it do you know what that sometimes happens in christians lives again Yes, we're going to serve God with everything. But they get lazy and they, oh, I'll go to church uh, only once on a Sunday. Oh, maybe once in a month. 
or maybe just Easter and Christmas, and they become weaker. Their commitment drops off. Oh, I'm going to pray every morning. And then once a week's enough, isn't it? And then I'm going to read the word. Oh, see, we've got to make determined commitments to say, I will. A disciple is not somebody who turns up to church. A disciple is someone who says, I will count the cost and I will finish the job. Number four, the fourth ship I want you to get into is fellowship. Fellowship. Well, it's a bit like some of the others, but this is talking about the community. Interesting thing about a community. Everyone supports everyone else. When a community gets together, they bring food and they share it. When a community gets together, they bring sports equipment and play games and they talk and they fellowship. We need to see that exactly the same thing. But too often today, people are saying we've got to do other things. Like, oh, the footy is so important. We sit there in this great arena, 100,000 other people, watching someone run up and down, and then we leave. And we say, was that fellowship? No, that was watching someone else. Sometimes it happens in church. We turn up to church, we watch your people up on the stage, they sing good, they speak good, but they don't interact. See, the Bible puts in the Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25, do not neglect the meeting together, as is the habit of some. But encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Of course, the day drawing near is the return of Jesus. All I can tell you, it's one day closer than it was yesterday. And tomorrow is then we're going to get closer. We don't know when, but every day it gets closer. We must do what? Encourage people to get together. But I'm not quite sure it means get together and sit there and watch someone up on a stage. It's talking about interacting, becoming life with them, doing life, being part of connect groups, doing things through the week. See, I'm not sure how we can call ourselves in fellowship if we end up with a group of 100, 200, 300 people and we just stand there and say, isn't that great? If we don't have a group of 10 that we call our friends. I encourage you, be in a connect group. If you haven't got into one this year, get into it. If you're not sure how, where, get on our website and have a look. You'll see them in all of our campuses. Next one, this is great ship, this one, scholarship. Well, simple. We need to learn, learn of God, because, see, it says that we've got to know what God wants for our lives. Romans 15 puts this way. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. In other words, all the Old Testament, all the scriptures were written to teach us. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and encouragement, they prove we may have hope. We might have hope. See, the truth is that we have got everything we need contained in the scripture. But unless we read it, it's of no value for you. People can book in the university, but if they don't do the work of the classes, they don't get any value from it. We might go to church, but unless we actually commit ourselves to the word. In fact, I want to inspire you. Get into Bible school. We've just started our Cert 3, Cert 4 and diploma here across Turning Point. We've got numbers of people coming through. It's exciting. Why? Because they're committing themselves to say, I want to learn so that I can be even more useful. I'm getting into this ship called scholarship. It's not about me having a piece of paper. It's about learning what God has got for my life. What about this ship? Stewardship. Whoa, that gets a bit scary. But stewardship means faithfulness. We are stewards. We are to look after things. See, Luke 16 says it like this. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So that's the truth of it, isn't it? It's the little things that matter. It's that ice cream you stole when you were a kid. It was the tax return you didn't want to fill out properly. It's the little things. But hang on, in our Christian life, it's the little things that we don't want to bring our tithe to the storehouse. We don't want to commit to the building of a new building to see that we need more churches planted, that we're willing to be faithful and sow ourselves in. See, if we all rise up in our stewardship, then I can tell you this, we will change the world because, see, out of your faithfulness comes the blessing. It's not about the money you give. It's about the heart that you have. And so if you can be trusted in the little, you'll get a lot. And so 
I remember a story a long time ago. A guy was praying one day and he said, Oh God, I've got a terrible job. I only earn $100 a week. So how can I afford to give $10 a week? And the voice comes back to him and says, If I gave you a job that gave you $100,000 a week, would you be willing to give $1,000 a week? And you suddenly thought, 1000 How can I give 1000 He says, well, that's why you don't have a job worth $100,000, because you have not done in that little. Today, when we start to give in that little, our children, I remember they used to get small amounts of pocket money. Sometimes when they're naughty, <clears throat> they would get things like 10 and 20 cents, and they had to go and find their one and two cent coins back in those days to take their tithe. And then when they were good, they got more. And then they learned that it wasn't too hard to tithe because in the little they became faithful. So in the much larger, it was easy. Number seven. This is the one I know we all would love to do, this ship. It's called worship. But worship is not just singing. Well, it's not just making a noise or the band really playing well or there's a great song leader and you enjoy listening to them. Worship is when you show adoration to your God. So that's what we've got to do is show adoration. But how do we do it? See, sometimes in adoration, we think if it was a person, we would give them a gift. We would put our arms around them. We would say nice things. Well, hang on a minute. We could give them a gift. It's called tithing and offering. We could put our arms around. That's called other people. We could say good things. We could speak nicely to one another. See, let me just read it out of Hebrews chapter 13. It says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Yep, that sounds a good idea. So now it describes it. What's the sacrifice of praise? The fruit of lips that openly confess his name. In other words, we're saying really good things about Jesus, about how God loves us. But then it goes on, and, not stopping, and, the first thing is you speak well of Jesus, you live for Jesus, and do not forget to do good and to share with others for such sacrifices God's well pleased if you want God to be excited about you you want to show your worship to him show respect to one another care for one another encourage one another see today once we get hold of this and get into the ship that God's got for us those seven ships then we can see incredible change apprenticeship learning to serve companionship, standing there in prayer and being faithful to one another, discipleship, being committed to the journey, fellowship, living in this community together and trusting and believing one another, not listening to what the world says about how you should work together, listen to what God says, scholarship, sitting there, learning the word, taking the word and living it out. Then of course there's stewardship, giving ourselves in faithfully, tithe, offering, time, commitment and of course worship in the presence of God. Can I encourage you, take hold of these seven ships and get into them. And that way I know God is going to pour out his blessing upon you as you realize who he is in your life.
Well, I hope everyone enjoyed that message. The most important thing we've got to remember is that we need to stay united in Christ. Now, the first step to staying united in Christ is to give our heart to the Lord. Now, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, if you haven't invited Him into your life, then this is a great opportunity to do so. You simply need to ask Him in. If you want more information or need some help with that, please contact our church via our webpage or give the office a call on the number below. God bless you all and have a great week.